Hey everyone, today let's talk about one of the tissues damaged when you have gluten sensitivity, and that tissue is thyroid peroxidase. We're going to talk about why it matters. Okay, so thyroid peroxidase is one of the tissues that we know can be damaged if you have a gluten sensitivity. So let's start by saying what the heck is gluten sensitivity. Well, gluten sensitivity is kind of a amorphous term that means your immune system reacts against gluten. Now, sometimes you know you've got gluten sensitivity because you eat wheat and you have overt symptoms. Other times you eat gluten and you don't have any idea you have gluten sensitivity because it doesn't cause symptoms that you immediately connect with eating the gluten. A lot of people think that you know if you have a gluten sensitivity you'll know it because you're going to have gastrointestinal symptoms like diarrhea or bloating. But that's not the case. Research has shown over again, and of course in my last 20 years I've seen it as well, that gluten sensitivity has more non-GI symptoms than GI symptoms. So what does it cause? Well, it can cause things like fatigue and headaches and uh, Hashimoto's, which we'll talk about in just a second. It can cause all sorts of different hormonal problems and neurological problems, but GI problems are really not that common, comparatively speaking. Okay, so that's gluten sensitivity. So how can that damage something in your thyroid? Well, there's a process that's called cross-reactivity, sometimes called molecular mimicry. Uh, an immunologist found, out, found this out several decades ago, and so here, here's how it works. Uh, when you make an antibody to something, right, like in gluten sensitivity or wheat sensitivity, your immune system makes antibodies. Now, an antibody is like a little post-it note that your immune system makes to stick onto something. And, you know, normally, naturally, we make antibodies to lots of different things in our body, but we make, you know, little small amounts. That's kind of how our immune system does surveillance and keeps an eye on things. Now, when you have a lot of antibodies to something, then that's a problem because your immune system thinks that thing needs to be killed. So in gluten and wheat sensitivity, you're making a lot of antibodies to gluten and wheat or various pieces of it. Now, I want to stop here and say that I'm kind of oversimplifying that topic a little bit because there's actually quite a few things in wheat that you could have a problem with, and I'm just using wheat or gluten as kind of as a catch-all term, all right? Now, thyroid peroxidase, otherwise called TPO, that's something that lives in your thyroid gland. It's an enzyme, and it's what your thyroid gland uses to make thyroid hormones. Now, you got to remember, every cell in your body needs and uses thyroid hormones. And so if something happens that's going to start reducing your ability to make thyroid hormones, you might have some symptoms. So cross-reactivity between gluten wheat antibodies and thyroid peroxidase, that causes a reduction in thyroid peroxidase. And if you start developing antibodies against thyroid peroxidase, as well as antibodies to the gluten, now we don't just have a gluten problem, we have an autoimmune problem that's called Hashimoto's. So let me back up and make sure you understand that. So here's the connection. You can have a gluten sensitivity, a wheat sensitivity, right? And that means you're making antibodies uh, to wheat and gluten. But these antibodies look like they can stick on to other things that kind of look like the gluten and wheat. And the reason it is, again, it's called cross-reaction, molecular mimicry. There's protein sequences that kind of match up between the two things. So if you start making not just antibodies to the gluten, but antibodies to your thyroid gland and the thyroid peroxidase, well, now you have Hashimoto's, which is an autoimmune problem. And what does that lead to? Well, that can lead to hypothyroidism. What does that cause? Well, that causes symptoms like depression, weight gain, hair loss, brain fog, uh, joint and muscle pain, sleep problems. Uh, hypothyroidism is kind of like the worst case scenario when you have Hashimoto's. I mean, to be fair, there's a spectrum. I'll just briefly tell you what it is. I have a whole lot of other videos on Hashimoto's, but there's a spectrum. The first over here is what we call euthyroid Hashimoto's, and that's where you have the antibodies that I was talking about, like you've got the antibodies, but your thyroid hormone levels are fine, okay? The next progression in the stage is called subclinical, and that's where you still have, still got the antibodies, but now one of your thyroid hormone tests called TSH is a little bit high. The terminology doesn't make that much sense, but is what it is. And then the next phase is what we call overt hypothyroidism, sometimes just called hypothyroidism. But you've got the antibodies that's causing that. And when you're over here in this area, you pretty much have to take thyroid hormone replacement because you just can't make that thyroid hormones uh, for yourself anymore. Now, I personally see probably 20 to 30 new Hashimoto's patients uh, every month. And these people are taking thyroid hormones, but they still feel bad. 
a lot of them are still eating gluten and wheat. And that could be one of the reasons why they still feel bad. Now there's a lot more to that, but I wanted to make this video to make everyone aware that if you've got a gluten or wheat problem and you're making antibodies to those things, um, whether you know it or not, you could also be damaging your thyroid gland and setting yourself up for not just one problem, but two. Uh, not just gluten sensitivity, but also Hashimoto's. So look, if you've got symptoms that I mentioned like uh, uh, brain fog, hair loss, depression, weight gain, uh, fatigue, and you haven't been tested to see if you have a thyroid problem, and you haven't tested to see if you have Hashimoto's, then you should definitely get tested. And if you already know you have Hashimoto's and you're still eating gluten, I don't know why you're doing that, because research is very clear that this is something you really shouldn't be eating. Now, if you're wondering, hey, can I test if I have gluten sensitivity, there's really only a couple ways to do that, and I've got another, uh, uh, another video I'll make on that topic. But let me just suffice to say that for me, the best test to be comprehensive about that is a test done by Cyrex Labs, uh, and it's their, I think it's Array 3X is what it's called, and it's a very comprehensive way of looking at all the little pieces of gluten and wheat that you could be making antibodies to. A lot of the sort of conventional go to your primary care doctor and do a gluten test, it's really not that complete. So you might want to be working with someone who understands this stuff I've just been talking about. So punchline today is uh, if you got a wheat problem, you could very easily have a thyroid problem. So make sure you're working with someone that knows how to screen you for both of those. And even more importantly than that, knows what to do about both of them because it's uh, it can get pretty complex.